Welcome back. Wow, we got a lot of distance here between us now. We were real close to you on TV. Uh, welcome back to uh, the show tonight. We've got uh, we've got a really uh, nice lineup here. Um, we have a uh, one of the members of our legislative district 15, uh, Steve Kaiser. He's a representative and he's a freshman. So we're going to get a perspective here that may be a little different from people that have been around for a long time. And then we've got the star of radio and television, <laughs> Jose Borajero. <laughs> yeah, okay. And he has been, you know, when I first started radio, I was on his show one time. That's right. Yeah, That's I was right. on your show. And now he's moved along and he's here on Hub Radio. He does a, a program. But, but that was only a radio show. Yeah, they didn't have TV. No, that that was the old days. <laughs> but but that's because we were we were, TV. we were uglier then. Uh, <laughs> we got so good looking after my plastic surgery. Now I can <laughs> we all had TV. plastic surgery, so we could do radio or television. At any rate, and, and uh, he has done something years and years and years ago. When I first met him, he wasn't sure how to get involved, and he wanted to do something meaningful, and and he did. He started looking at the bills that are going through the legislature. And, you know, back in those days, we were getting, what, 1,400 bills a session or something to that effect? And, and it was just crazy. I mean, you know, people put through, let's make bubble it's, gum. It's not the, so bad anymore. No, but it was like, let's make bubble gum the official chewing gum of, of Arizona, you know. Like, those, are important, you those important issues that affect everybody <laughs> right. on a daily basis. <laughs> so at any rate, he got onto this thing and he started saying, these are kind of stupid. Why are we doing this? You know, we're taxpayers. All of these bills are going through and for what reason? So he started letting the public know that some of these bills are just nonsense. And here's the important bills. And, and he would make recommendations, which I thought were very good. This is a do pass. This is a don't pass bill. And so uh, that's Jose's claim to fame. And then he started this radio show that ran last year, but cut, got cut, abbreviated because of COVID. And so this year he's, he's taken it on, and this is the new legislature. And it's, it's, it, the name of his show is Bill Review Arizona uh, 2021. And so let's go with that. And I know right now we want to put you, Steve, on the hot spot and All find right. out what on God's name is going on. Jose, what do no. you have to say? Well, the, the first thing that comes to mind, uh, in no particular order, but the first thing that comes to my mind is we have the, the, uh, the, uh, the governor veto 22 bills for no good reason. 22 bills. Now, here's the thing. The fact that a governor refuses to sign bills or s refuses to consider bills, that is nothing new. This happens all the time. They say, okay, so this is a priority. You do that. When you do that, I'll do this. But what I have never heard it done, and it may have been done many times, but I never heard of it, is to go in and say, I'm going to veto 22 bills for no particular reason, just because they're there, just because I can. I can. Yeah. And how does that, well, somebody should give him a book that, you know, that book about uh, uh, how to make friends and influence people, because <laughs> he got it wrong. Yes, absolutely. It did completely backfired. The... My assumption of why he did that, getting to your original question of why would somebody yeah. do that, it was the Friday, I think, or the Thursday before Memorial Day weekend, mm -hmm. and he was upset that we didn't provide a budget yet, so he was going to teach us a lesson from the ninth floor, come down and smack us in the face and tell us who's boss, but he keeps forgetting that he's a co-equal branch of government, that he's not king of Arizona, and you can't veto 22 bills that... A lot of these are bipartisan bills. Well, by the too. way, one of the one of the radio stations in town does does call him a royal. It's a royal. Well, that that was such an ill attempt at influence. It was just unbelievable. It backfired in the sense that now you have Republicans and Democrats in the House and Senate rallying against the governor to get their bills back up and overturned. Yeah, I guess he got a, a good. He got used to the idea that he could manhandle the legislature because of all that happened during COVID. You know, all these right, right. executive orders, and nobody stood up to him. All that money going straight to the yeah. Yeah, so he decided. Well, you know, I am not vulnerable at all here. Right. So the so. good news is we will we do have the votes to do a veto override on several of those. And so that's going to be coming down in the next few weeks also. Well, that was, that was my next question mm -hmm. because this also is highly irregular. I mean, once the bill goes through, and by the way, folks, some of these bills, it took a lot of effort. I mean, these, these guys worked their butt off. Uh, about half of these bills, or at least one-third of them, 
instead of having the usual last vote in the House and last vote in the Senate, it went back to the original House because it had been modified somewhere mm -hmm. along the line. So it wasn't, it's, there was a lot of work that went into these bills and then all of a sudden for no particular reason he vetoes it. Mm -hmm. So my question is, okay, so we have these bills and now they have been reintroduced. Mm -hmm. They have a different uh, bill number but the text is the same. Mm -hmm. But I, I am not aware and now, being a freshman, you may not be all that well yeah. informed about this. Yeah. In fact, this may be a question and even a 10-year veteran may not know the answer to. But uh, apparently you can uh, suspend the rules. Yeah. You can suspend the rules and then, because normally you would not be able to do this. The bill is uh, it's, it's vetoed and that's the end of it. Right. So now yeah. you, you have suspended the rules and you have new bills with the same text but you don't go through the same process. You go through an abbreviated process, correct? So, yeah, it's at the, uh, the discretion of the, the leadership. So this is at the request of the speaker to do this, to allow these, a late introduction is what it's called. Yeah. The Senate president did this also for Nancy Bartow's sex ed bill when she reintroduced it a few weeks ago. So, but you have to be careful doing that because if you do that for your bill, then Ron's gonna want his bill reintroduced too. And if, so we have, you know, certain deadlines and dates of when bills can be, um, uh, the last new bill can be dropped at this date, the last committee hearing is this yeah. date. And so to do these extra things, you have to have special permission of the leadership. They have to suspend the rules, like you mentioned. The special session we're going into has to be called on by either the governor or uh, it takes two thirds of the House or the Senate to call a special, special session. So that's 40 members. Keep in mind, we only have 31 Republicans in the House, so there's no way you're getting 40 to call a special session for certain things. but. Um, so it's a suspension of the rules. Uh, now, now, all 22 bills have been reintroduced, mm -hmm. but that does not mean that they're going, all 22 are going to advance. So what you're saying is that there's going to be some negotiation and whatnot as to which, which ones get to go forward or? So the ones that are bipartisan, those will get the 40 votes, and, uh, they'll, and that will allow a veto override. So the, the ones that are bipartisan out of those 22 should be fine for a veto override. It's the, it's the party line ones that are a little bit dicier. Well, uh, the, the, the part I don't uh, quite understand is that you can always veto a bill, but why would you reintroduce a bill with a different bill number if the idea was to override the original veto? I don't know if that's a procedural thing where they have to create a new number for it because it's been vetoed and officially dead. I, I could. I need to maybe look into. That's a procedural thing that, uh, like the clerk. Like I said, office. folks, this is this is new territory. Uh, I I've been watching the legislature now for about ten years, and I never mm -hmm. seen this happen before. So. Have you seen uh, us get this close to the end of the fiscal year? Well, that's the next thing I was going <laughs> to ask you about. No, this has been a long session. <laughs> yeah. Well, here here we are. The uh, the uh, fiscal year is going to end in sixteen days. 16 days and we still do not have a budget so i don't know what's going to happen are we are we going to have layoffs or are we going to have shutdown of the government or uh, uh, i did ask around about that uh specifically because i'm worried about that too yeah. and uh a state shutdown is a lot different than a federal government shutdown which we've all lived through and seen right it wasn't that big of a deal right because it shows you how much how little the federal government actually in, you know uh, the state government would be a lot more dramatic if it shut down. It's never happened before for a reason. And um, um, I was reading some articles recently too, just today that said that um, the Department of Administration is quietly preparing in case that does happen. There is some funds available through the executive where they could, you know, the agencies are all executive agencies. So he could do things to keep those certain agencies running until there's some kind of negotiation. There could be a skinny budget that gets passed and then continuing negotiations from there. That's another option. Well, yeah, and we don't, uh, one, one major difference is that we can't print any money. <laughs> the, the federal yeah, government that's, can, yeah. but we can't. Right. So, so every, you, every penny that, uh, that uh, gets spent has to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. So what do you think the big issue is? I mean, the, the number one thing for the legislature to do is the budget. Mm -hmm. That is number one. Mm -hmm. So you would think you'd go into session and you'd get the budget taken care of and that's wrapped up, and then you get on to the people's business. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, they wait to the very 
end where there's all this pressure and you got to move towards this and oh my gosh there's a deadline everybody's freaking out about it why don't they just focus on that first well go ahead i was i was just gonna say i don't know Um, well i I think i know (laughs) okay good good that's why you're both here Well, have you ever heard of kicking the can down the line, down the street? Mm. Yes. That's exactly what happened. Remember, a couple of years ago, we were going to have the budget negotiations right in the middle of the session. It still went to the end. Mm. Okay. So but what it, happens is that there is so much given and taken, I think, that they keep on postponing it, postponing it. But by statute, isn't that really the only thing that they're obligated to do? Is the budget? I don't know if that's, that's correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, you'd yeah. think, let's just get this done, and and then you work towards the end. I mean, no, I, the, I don't know. I'm just thinking so from I, a logical. I, I sense. do know what I've heard from this session anyway. Every every new month, um, JLBC is giving us updated revenue projections. Revenue projections. So the longer you wait, the better your revenue projections and your incoming revenue um, numbers are so you can better plan for what that next fiscal year should be as far as budgeting so maybe that's part of it i think there's more to it than that obviously i think that there's a little bit of leveraging that's allowed that way I'm sure there's right? a lot of leverage you keep, you keep the budget to the end and you can kind of keep people in line maybe a little bit more because if they have something in the budget they're more apt to follow direction you know towards the end maybe i don't know and, and I, I, and i'm pretty I th- sure that's you mean you I think mean, you're correct you that. mean this is politics <laughs> is that what we're saying playing well, politics yeah. with the people's <laughs> money here here's <laughs> one here's one thing that we're not quite used to yet and we, we probably should be used to it by now and that is that we have only a one vote majority in mm-hmm. each chamber mm-hmm. now what that means Okay, so if the Democrats are against something, let's say the budget, they don't like it, they're going to vote no, but it doesn't make any difference because we have the vote to pass it. In the House, we have 31 votes, which is exactly what's needed, and in the Senate, we have 16, which is exactly what's needed. But the problem there is that if we have one representative that does not like the budget, then or any bill for that matter, then it doesn't go anywhere. That could never happen. It has happened several times, and I have proof. So last Monday, we had a 30-30 that, vote, yeah, right, that's right, and it failed. That's right. Uh, yeah. Three of them, as a matter of fact. So uh, what happens is that every one of these uh, legislators, a re- Republican, in this case, a Republican legislator, each one of them has veto power, mm-hmm. single-handedly veto power, over every bill that comes through, including the budget uh, built. Do you think there's a time where they forget that they're actually serving their constituents? Oh, they forget just, that quite often. And they're just thinking of themselves and saying, well, I have this extra power. I'm wearing a cape now and I can leap tall buildings in a single <laughs> bound. And they forget about the people that put them into that place and they're subject to them. They're, right. they're supposed to be doing, they're yep. serving half, the people. Half of the problems that we have at the legislature will be fixed if we had go back to a CS, a four or five uh, vote majority, and that way no single individual right. can, can, can hold the, uh, the process hostage. Right. And that's what it is. And there's about three or four in each chamber that do this on a regular basis. Not all the time, but one would do it to this with, with this bill, one would do it with the other bill. Well, we're so glad that you're gonna point those people out to us right now so that everybody can know who they are. <laughs> I'm not gonna name names right now, but I do uh, quite regularly, as a matter of fact, if you read my reports. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's important. It's important that people know, because they think, oh, you know, uh, this guy's been serving us for years and years, and he just, he's a good guy. They don't know how he votes. And oh, it's, well, and it's no, so important. No. If, if, if people subscribe to my, uh, uh, my stuff, uh, they know how they voted. All right, how do we subscribe? Well, there's a variety of ways. I'm on Facebook, and I, am, I have a website. All and, right, well, uh, give it to us. We want to know. Well, the website is uh, azpeopleslobbyist.com. Az That's okay. the only I thought only lobbyist word. was a dirty word. <laughs> I'm not, not a lobbyist. on this show. It's a, it's a people's lobbyist. Oh, that's right. Okay. It's pro bono. Okay. Yeah, so pro that's bono the website. How else can they get in touch with you? The, uh, well, the same way at uh, Facebook. If you if you are on Facebook and you enter a search for Az uh, People's Lobbyist, it would come up. Okay, good. And uh, and that's my uh, uh, my. You know, we page. we do have a lot of people that love to watch the show. They want to get involved, but they're not the door to door people. 
you know, maybe they're too busy, maybe they've got something else going on, but just to be informed so that you can have a, a rational and intelligent conversation with somebody who may not know, and you can pass it on to somebody else too. It's so very important. Yeah. And, and we'll give you we'll kind of give you an idea of some of the political double talk that goes on. You know that you're going to hear this coming up in the next election as to how, at least in the county, how your property tax rate has gone down. They do this all the time. Oh well, we we reduced your property tax rate. Well, how come my property tax went up? Because the assessment went up. It's just one of these. <laughs> it's right. just you know the egg thing you know yeah. <laughs> where you go move this around and so you need to pay attention so you're not going to get blindsided on this as everybody I know the board of supervisors I don't know that any of these guys will run again but uh, because of their their dastardly behavior in terms of this audit thing but the bottom line they're going to tell you all kinds of things and uh, by the way I, I it, I want to. I want to exclude you from any comments about the legislature because I've known you a long time, mm -hmm. and I've known you always to be an upfront guy. If there's a little magic trick in there, you'll say you'll tell everybody. And you both magic done trick. some great things together. That's too. right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I. I want to hasten to point out that I. Uh, I let people know who the bad guys are, but I also let them know who the good guys are. Yes, okay. important. And thank uh, the good guys when they do good things. Yeah, because yeah. let's face it, there's only a handful, really. There's only a handful of rotten apples in, in, in each uh, chamber. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, fortunately, in, in, in my district, uh, and it's also your district, yes. Ron, and you're our, and one Steve's of our representatives. And you're our representative, yes. Fortunately, in our district, we have all three, our senator and our two representatives, are extremely good. Uh, we're, we're, we're lucky that we have that all three right now. It didn't, have, it didn't used and to be good, that way. Good, we had only two at one point. And it's nice that we all work well together down there, too, because I see a lot of uh, good, two good reps on one side and they, they don't really, work they together. They really look after the dollar bills mm -hmm. of, the, of the taxpayers. Well, as, they do. As support. they should. Mm -hmm. they, well, they do represent the district. See, that's the thing. If, if, if I were in a district that's uh, rather liberal, I could say, well, okay, well, they're representing the district, you know, and you can't complain too much about that. Uh, but uh, uh, now we have people that are actually voting according to the wishes of the, uh, of the district. Right. And that is uh, very, uh, very important. Now, we did not have that prior to this last election, folks. We had a senator that was not in sync with the, uh, with the district. And actually, logjam good senators, uh, good representatives work, and just stovepipe it and put it in a drawer and let it die. Right. And, yep. and that was, well, I'll say it, if nobody else will, and that was uh, Heather Carter. And Heather Carter had a tendency to be, uh, uh, be a bit on the uh, extremely um, a fence sitter, I, I guess would say. And she usually, not usually, but many times fell to the left. And, and she was and, a very good, uh, very good campaigner, and had lots of money. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't believe the amount of money that went into an election where the senator gets only twenty four thousand dollars a year. <laughs> well, we, I mean, there was hundreds about, of thousands of dollars. We yeah, yeah sometimes in the that. millions of dollars that we are coming in from out of state. We did talk about that, and I think yeah. that mm -hmm. race was over a million dollars. It was, it? yeah, for sure. Yep. A million dollars for a twenty four thousand dollars. Twenty eight, same but way, right? In yeah. the, in yeah. the yeah. end, in the end, her record caught up with her. Yep. In the end, people saw uh, that uh, she said, I am this, and then her vote indicated something else. Oh. Yeah, but it would, you made that happen, too. Uh, I mean, no, you, you I, was, I, was, I was one of the, you know, the, the, there's a big wheel, you know, with mm -hmm. a, a lot of gears, and I was one of those tiny little gears in the, in the machinery. The, the candidate that was running against her was strong. Nancy Barto. Nancy Barto. Right. Nobody else could have beat her, but Nancy Barto. Right. Yeah. Right. And your and your co-host uh, as well was very very uh, instrumental, I think. And that was Archie Dickinson, very instrumental. In, uh, <laughs> Archie. Archie is uh, probably. Um, I always call him the contrarian. You know, like they always say, every everybody needs a parliamentarian. <laughs> well, ours has a parliamentarian and a contrarian, <laughs> and. <laughs> I love Archie to pieces, but I don't know that I've ever been on the same side of an issue <laughs> <laughs> with Archie ever. Well, you know, remember <laughs> when, when we talked about uh, starting this program, the, the uh, Bill Watch? Yes. Okay. Obviously, I cannot do this by myself. It was so boring to just listen to me 
talk about bills, you know, just standing here in front of you doing that and being, you know. Uh, uh, my audience would last maybe five minutes. So I needed a, a co-host. So who's the, the first person that I thought of? <laughs> it was Archie. Why? Because if I said it's black, he would say it's white, okay? <laughs> and vice versa. So we have a very lively discussion. Okay, sometimes we agree on some things, but most of the time we are in disagreement. I present one side, he presents the other side, and you folks at home, you get the benefit of both sides of the story and you can make up your mind as which to is what a makes good, sense. Which is a good point. Yeah. It's yeah. really important. That's right. Well, that's why I insisted on it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so there is a lot more going on. Well, I don't know if there's so much going on at the legislature, but I am curious as to, because now the, uh, the governor has called, uh, I guess he hasn't done it yet, but he indicated that he wanted to have a special session to deal with the wildfires. Yes, that we're going in tomorrow for that. And tomorrow it's going to happen. Yeah. Now, what I don't understand is why you need a special session for it when you are already in session. Yeah, that's a good question. So a special session, from what I understand, it has to be specific to one topic only. And so this is, and it can be called by the governor or two thirds of the legislature. So the governor called this one to focus specifically on the forest fires. And so what the reason it takes several days is you have to first read a bill and then constitutionally you have to wait a day and then second read it and then third read it. It has to go through a committee. So the Natural Resources Committee is actually gonna meet about this. It'll be quick, but it's really to allocate funding for the fire response from what I understand. And so it'll be quick, it'll be focused on the fires and it'll be most likely appropriations to support that and maybe other resources. But then we know for sure that nothing else will be taken care of during that period of time. Well, what's nice is you can flip from a special session to regular session at the sound of a gavel. Yeah. So well, we could go, we and, could jump. And that's, and that's why I don't understand why yeah. you have to have both going uh, at the same it's, time. It's again, procedure. Procedure is the yeah. heart of everything that happens down there. That's when you see parliamentarian tricks happen. It's based on procedure. Yeah. When Michelle Udall stood up and did her thing um, a couple weeks ago, that was a procedural trick that she read and forced it right to, I think it was you know, first read immediately because she had one other Republican to join with her on the, with the 29 Democrats to get the 31 to advance it. No one knew that was coming, uh, supposedly. Um, but, um, you know, th those are the procedural games that uh, get played down there. But this is procedures, everything down there is what I'm learning, is what the yeah. point of this, what I'm saying, so... Yeah, well. You know, it's, it's amazing that it took a wildfire to call a special session by the governor, yet COVID shut down pretty much the whole state, and he wanted to do that on his own. So you, you wonder why now it's important, but before it wasn't important? You know, I, yeah. you have a big question about that. And I think it all, I mean, I think it boils down to the COVID situation he was getting federal money straight from the feds down specifically to the executive to specifically to the certain agencies, I guess. Or so he didn't need. He didn't you. need us exactly. So the wildfires, he's not getting federal money. And do I need you? Right. Sounds like politics. But of course, the thing there that uh, that always was troubling, and you know, I'll be honest about it, is I think a lot of the decisions, and knowing what we know now about Dr. Fauci, and knowing now what we know about the disease, I think that big decisions that were made here in the state to shut things down were wrong. Absolutely. Totally absolutely. Absolutely wrong. And a lot of businesses, we almost went under. I mean, we're still struggling to, to get yeah. back on our feet. And there are businesses, I think, throughout the rest of the year, we're going to see a lot of businesses still closing down. Yeah, that was horrific. And I, I hate to say that, but, but you know, I mean, I, how many of you have gone into a restaurant lately and still, they sit, still have the seats six, eight feet apart? They don't have a full uh, group of people. The policy that the U.S. government has had, plus the state, where they're paying people mm -hmm. unimaginable un amounts of unemployment compensation, where they're they're unemployed and they're making sixty thousand dollars a year unemployed, while where they were and working, married couples even over a hundred thousand. And while they were working, they were ma making forty or forty thousand, yeah. and unemployed, they're making sixty thousand. I mean, come on. Let's get sounds like who, sounds who, who, who like a guaranteed that? income, yeah. right? And, and in some places, uh, like in California, they're they're dealing with that guaranteed incomes, and they're even doing. By the way, we I didn't talk that we should talk to, uh, to to Ted about this. They're paying reparations from the Civil War. Now I don't know. <laughs> that's right. Some 
Some communities are paying. That gives me an idea. I should get reparations for the Spanish American War. <laughs> <laughs> Did what, Teddy what trigger you, you earlier? It, you saw Teddy? That's right. That's are, you, right. are you a veteran from the, the Spanish-American War? I could be. <laughs> <laughs> the last, the last but, but look at this. Neither any of these people who get reparations. Right. Yeah. So the, the fact that you were not veteran of that war doesn't mean a thing. All it means is that, well, uh, it, the color of your skin has a lot to do with it. Well, the and, question, I, I, and, and then you have to understand that I am no longer white. Oh, that's right. You know, when you were in Cuba, you were a white guy. I used to be white, so I know how you guys feel. <laughs> and what are you now? Well, well, I came to the U.S., became Hispanic. <laughs> Overnight. So you were white, now you're a Hispanic. So you became a person of color. <laughs> I became a person of Overnight. color. Overnight. Overnight. Wow. That, there you go. I'm a person oh of color. <laughs> you know, I always thought if white I was a color. Name, that's that's be... what I was taught. I'm going to change my name. <laughs> it won't matter. It depends on where you are. Yeah. Yeah. Where are we? No, if we go to another country, if we go to a predominantly black country, we'd be a person of color, right? <laughs> I thought white was the absence of color. Well, it is a color, though. I mean, well, you look, I don't know. Last time, just ask that, Crayola. That was, was flesh color. <laughs> it's 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 just the opposite. Black is the absence. You got kind of a white shirt, and I don't think you know. I don't look like your white shirt. You're tan. You're good. <laughs> anyway, how about how about e pluribusunum? Anybody like that? I love that concept. Yes. Yeah. Out of many, one. Yeah. We were yeah. talking about that the other day uh, outside here. There were some people that came in and, and were talking, and uh, it, it was interesting in that there are people, and I'm going to share this with those of you that are not Americans that are around the country. America is not a race. It's not a nationality. It's an idea. That's right. It's the idea of personal freedom, personal integrity personal opportunities and all you have to do is believe that and unfortunately we're getting more and more people into this country that that believe in taking rather than giving you know ron traveling around as much as i have I, i've noticed that you can go into any country if i went to germany i could follow their rules i could speak the language i could follow their customs i could eat their food but i would never be german it's oh. just not going to happen France, Italy, no matter where I go, I can't become that. But when, but you can come from anywhere in the world and become an American, an American. and that's what's so special and so unique about mm -hmm. the United States. Well, well said. Well said. And, and we love this country, mm -hmm. we and do. we've got to protect it. And that's that's one of the key things. And thank you for your service. And freedom isn't uh, free. And you were both in the military. And thank Army's you for your birthday today. There. Yeah, yes. we, well, you should have been here a little earlier. We yeah, had a, flag we day. Had a tribute to, yes. Yes. We had a tribute to the flag. We had a tribute to the Army. We had a tribute to Donald Trump. Nice. And especially we had a tribute to Sheriff Joe. Nice. It's all their birthdays wow. today. <laughs> yeah. But the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> Go Army, beat Navy. <laughs> Well, I don't know. The, the, the Navy's got a... It's, it's the Marine Corps that was really the important thing. And they bred the Navy and Navy... <laughs> you know, there's, there's a funny joke about Marines and the Navy. You know, you see a sailor and you say, can I hook a lift? Got yeah, a because they're considered to be the taxi drivers. For Water the, taxi for the <laughs> Marine Corps. <laughs> the Marine Corps. <laughs> uh, uh, there you go. Thank uh, you, Marines. <laughs> and, and I'm outnumbered over here because... <laughs> Uh, uh, Ron is, uh, of course, a, a, a Marine, and I was, uh, I was a uh, sailor, and nice. so we were always at odds uh, as to who was what and what. The <laughs> well, we're all Americans, and we all yeah, fight right. for our. Beloved so, Representative country. Kaiser, I just, uh, I know that there's 22 that were vetoed, mm -hmm. and there's some very, very important ones, especially about election integrity. Mm -hmm. Are we going to be able to get those through? So a lot of the election integrity ones, some of those party line ones, we're trying to get in the budget through as amendments. So um, I saw the critical race theory for government institutions and cities and towns in the budget as an amendment. So I think what you'll do, you'll see that in there because you're never going to get 40 votes for any of those, right? You're not going to pick up nine Democrats to vote for election integrity bill or for the CRT. So those have to go in the budget in order to get through. So that's what... Um, that's the plan with those, basically. That's the strategy to get those through. And that's why it's so frustrating that he did what he did. As a Republican governor to these Republican party line bills, um, if we don't get these in the budget, then they are stalled out for another year. You know, it seems to me that he could have taken a lot of different courses on this. He mm -hmm. could have said, I will sign these, 
but I need you to come together for a budget. Uh, but why punish every citizen in the state of Arizona that would benefit from these bills to, to be in a position of control? It makes absolutely no sense. No, I just it doesn't. I just think the calculus had to have been if I veto these bills, it'll spur them into action. It did the exact opposite as far as um, it, you know coalesced the legislature together made us stronger against the executive so but certainly he must know that if he vetoes a bill that then it has to either go back in mm -hmm. be resubmitted or go for a supermajority right do we yep. have that yeah in, I, in the I guarantee procedure? they understand that yeah yeah it, was, it doesn't make any sense yeah, i think it was re retaliatory and he, i think he got bad advice if somebody was telling him to do that that was terrible advice and well, I wish he hadn't done that. I mean, well, you know, politically, I, I think I think he's searching for a place to land when he's uh, done here. But I agree. I, I was a supporter of his mm -hmm. uh, uh, eight years ago. Uh, I was still a supporter of his four years ago. Uh, but now I found it extremely difficult for me to say, you know, you need to continue on here. Um, I mean, obviously he's going to. I know there was recall the governor that that's kind of crazy at this stage when you get yeah, a year, no, it, year and a half that's not going to happen when you have a year and a half left you know you're going to spend one but, whole but year speak, there speaking of the governor's race though there's a lot of people throwing their hats mm -hmm. into the ring oh, now for sure mm -hmm. yeah. yeah a lot of people that i was a little surprised about and, who were you surprised and, and you know kate katie uh katie hobbs you know, by the way, Katie Hobbs is the one that says all Trump supporters are neo-Nazis. Uh. That's Katie Hobbs. She's a Democrat, by the way. <laughs> you, you might know shocking. that from those kind of comments. Very shocking. Oh, we're used to that. Yeah. Well, I, I think that when, when America's audit comes out and the numbers are there and what she's been say, stating along the way, I think that that's going to be instrumental in whether she gets the support that she's going to need mm -hmm. to e even make a run for it. I want to I want to just spend a moment here and then we're going to have to go uh, Neil we have another guest coming on and uh, she's a lot prettier than either of you guys. Oh. And, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, today and I don't know that this is the case but today they were supposed to finish the hand count. I saw that yeah. And uh, that's uh, that's kind of crucial. Now there is a huge attempt here and uh, with John Brakey, and I, I support this, and I had talked to some people today that were down there. Uh, they still have not decided whether to count the ballot images. I am 100% in favor of counting the ballot images. Let, let everybody know what exactly, what's the difference and, between and the ballot and the ballot image. And, and that's what I wanted to do. Now, the ballots, ballots are paper ballots. They are not actually read. They are fed into a machine who takes a picture Okay, the pictures are the things that are counted by the Dominion equipment and other equipment, I might add. Um, when there's uh, difficulties, it spits them out when there's like double voting or under voting. Um, but, but what happens here, we're only looking at two races. We're looking at the presidential race and the senatorial race. The rumor that I have heard, and I, I, I can't tell you that I believe it, but I have heard that the numbers are so far off that, that Donald Trump had carried the state of Arizona by humongous numbers and that there are actually many fewer ballots than there are, are you ready for this, than there are votes. There's 2,100,000 votes, but there aren't that many ballots quite a number of ballots. So it's almost essential fewer. to be able to get the images so that you can take them from the hard copy to what was actually counted. And, and through this, now remember, this is all electronic now. Paper is difficult to, to work with, but this is all electronic. So now, and th this is the important thing, now they can go and find out, I'm a precinct committeeman, you're a precinct committeeman, you're a precinct uh -huh. committee, we're all precinct yes. committeemen. Now we can find out exactly how our precincts voted. They can take all of these numbers and say, okay, this is Ron's precinct. So anything that's Ron's precinct, we wanna print out what those numbers look like. And I can tell you, because I have the numbers how my precincts voted for the last 10 years, as you do, and we all do, and you'll say, well, wait a minute, how come in the last 10 years everybody voted this way, and now when all of a sudden in this election, mm -hmm. they voted that way? Now, if you got two and a half million, you don't know where those votes are. Now you know where they're at. And you start saying, gee, Ron, how come your precinct's done this? Well, I don't think my precinct's done this. How do I know? Because it's it's so so totally out of, out of sequence mm -hmm. with 
with reality that it can't be true. So you have a paper paper ballot. You run it through the machine. It counts it, right? No. That paper. No. 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 It, no, it, no, it, no, it, it takes it a takes picture of it, and then it and then it's counted. The picture and that, is and counted. That, yeah, and that paper ballot is now on the other side. Now I could take that paper ballot and run it through is it again. Poss- I could run it through again. All right. So if I run it through again, then I still only have one paper ballot, but now I have two, two images. Yes. So it's almost essential to do a full forensic audit to have those ballot images. Exactly, Ray. Now, if you say how many people in my, I, my and this is called Sunnyside precinct. Now, let's say 1,800 people voted, but I have 2,300 votes. How did that happen? Some of those things might have gone in twice. Now, there's another scenario, too, and, and they're called the, 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 uh, the, down, ba- the down ticket has uh, people that don't vote a lot because they don't know any of the candidates. Everybody knew Judges. Biden and Trump, so yeah. everybody's more likely to vote. You get down here to the constable, I don't know who to vote for, so I leave it blank. Now you're asking yourself, gee, in the president, they got like 1,800 votes down here. We got 180. Now you can play games. We don't know, and the thing is, is all of the ballot, your election would even be uh, be, mm-hmm. be looked at mm-hmm. uh, w- when you're dealing with the ballot images, every election. But isn't it fair? You might have won your election. Yes, yes. So, but isn't it fair to be able to fully audit the election? Of course. Mm-hmm. So what 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 would what would somebody's and, reason be to not do that? And Ray, the, the, first of all, the thing is, is they keep saying this is a waste of time. You know, the if the if the election the election was run perfect, okay, the audit will prove that. So you're mm-hmm. that's you're, right. You're right, right. It was run perfect. But if it wasn't run perfect, then you look. You signed the thing that it was run perfect, and it wasn't run perfect. Guess what? You're looking <laughs> at some trouble. Decertification. Will there be some worse. accountability? Well, I'm hoping there will. You know, this is this is crazy. Uh, and, and so, you know, we, we have all of these. You know, our legislature, we may have a lot more Republicans or even Democrats. I don't know which way it would go. But we as people of the United States and of Arizona and of Maricopa County, we have the right to have the leadership that we have chosen. Sure. And you know, not I, somebody I think has... we can all agree. We would accept, if we knew that it was done properly and audited correctly, would we all accept... The final results yeah people yes, just want to know i i think that's wonderful so you should be able to accept that too listen i'm looking at the clock here and the clock tells me that we have another break coming and so we're going to have a lovely young lady julia julia wentz will be here and if you like redheads you're gonna love julia she's got a message too so don't go away we'll be representative right thanks for having thank you me here great good to see you guys again yeah. thanks jose i'll see you guys tomorrow night